Hey guys, Javier Mercedes here for another Premiere Pro tutorial about how to make GIFs in Premiere Pro, professionally, premierly, professionally pro with the GIFs like this one. How do you make those memes? Well, let's find out. If you guys have any other ideas for what you want me to show you how to create in Premiere Pro, let me know in the comments down below. But for right now, let's deal with it and do some barn door. go to Premiere. I'm gonna make a new project. We're gonna call this how to boss a GIF Python deal with it. Put it over here in my favorites footage. Bring it in. What you want to do is on your clip go here and find where I want it to go in. Just hit the I key, rolls past, I push in and boom. find the spot here. So there's my clip, just drag it straight down. All you gotta do is click and drag. And look, it creates a sequence over here that's the same name. But I'm gonna rename the sequence to deal with it saving. Awesome. And always go by versions. Keep saving different versions of your sequences as you go along, it's just a good practice. So V1.1. So let's move this over here. We don't need any audio with this. So there's that. He's looking. Boom. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm instead of using the razor tool and hitting this, the razor tool right there, which you can do, what I'm doing is taking my playhead and adding a edit at playhead. So I hit F here just to show you. I'll bring up my keyboard shortcuts. Add edit here. Just add edit. It's wherever on the track if this is highlighted right here, it will make an insert point. It's much faster than using the razor cut tool. Use add edit. The default is command K for your computers, but if you change it, I'd change mine to F. Moving on. So right here I have this frame that I will probably use and I'll highlight the rest of this and I will go right click, add frame hold, boom. So now what will happen is it'll boom and he just stays right there. Boom. If this is the frame that we want to use, we need to go to the internet.coms, look up deal with it, PNG. See what our first image is. Is that a PNG? Looks like it is. I'm going to make a new folder. All you gotta do is click and drag in. There it is and just drag it straight on. Boom. Oh, cool. There they are. Pop. So that's where I want the glasses to uh, end up, a roundabout. Always work from the back forwards, however that looks like on the camera. Why you want to do that is you want to look at the spot where it's going to land and then animate backwards from there. So right here I'm going to make a keyframe for my position and say I want these glasses to end up right there. Then I move to the beginning and most of the time on all these GIFs they start from up here. So it'll look like this. Bop. I'll go maybe a little bit more, but we want this motion where it pops onto screen to look a little bit smoother than just a linear. We want it to go. Here, I'll do it with my own glasses. So I'm just like, right now it goes. What we want it to do is like. Cool. We want to do this down chick on the position. Right click, temporal interpolation, ease in. You can see it's changing this, the velocity. Temporal interpolation ease out. So always ease out with the beginning one because that's it's easing out of that keyframe and then it's going to ease into the next keyframe. To show you, I'm gonna extend this out just so you can see it even more. So here's this. Now, in order to make that really come across the right way, I'm going to take this keyframe and take this node right here and push it so it goes even more like and then eases right into spot. So grab this one going to zoom in just a smidge and bring this right towards the thing. So now it looks like this. Pop. Now that looks really sweet. Deal with it. So all we got to do is take our title tool here, make a title, type in deal with it. 
go to your effects controls. So if you hit shift five, it'll bring up your effects controls here. That brings up what the font source is. So we highlight it all and we go in here, we type in impact for some impactful text. Boom, already looks cool. Saban's waving at us and he's like, what's up, yo? We wanna take our stroke and make that black because that's how all the memes are doing it out on these streets on these internet web streets these days. Go a little bit bigger. And here's our scale for this. Boom, deal with it. So it looks like on most we would add even more. So I'm gonna go 10. You know what, let's go risky and go 30. That's too much. Always trying to find a happy medium. I like how 15 looks there. Now we can take the position of it, move it down here, and we want to center it. So I'm just going to hit this reset parameter. It's going to move this right here. But if we go to our paragraph settings over here, center text, there, it puts it exactly in the center. Now we can go down here and then move it down to where we want it to end up. Next, do our animation of the deal with it coming up as the glasses come down. So let's go. We go from this deal with it. I'm going to set another pr uh, position marker, boom because that, that's where we want it to end up. Remember, work from the back forwards and then go here to before the glasses come on and make another parameter and we want it to start from the bottom. So hit play. So what I want to happen is the glasses and the deal with it to arrive at their spots at the same time. How do you do that? Well, let's find out. You go to here, the deal with the glasses, and I go to my keyframe here, and to hit the exact same spot, all you gotta do is toggle between these keyframes here, which is a great tool. Click this one. Here's where it ends up, right there. Now, all I gotta do is go to my actual words deal with it, and then move this keyframe to snap it into place where that other one is. Now I'm going to go here and we want to do that same movement, that ease in, ease out. So I want to ease out of this first keyframe, temporal interpolation, ease out, and I want to ease into the one on the back end, ease in, boom. You get a curve, a bell curve like this. But remember, we want it to do that little slope so it doesn't go whoop, whoop, we want whoop. I think is better than and it's definitely better than and by I mean linear so here we go look at how it just pops right into that spot take this even further we're going to take our scale on the actual image itself and we're going to scale in on it here's where it ends up and we want it just to pop bap we want it to scale in with the rest of the stuff. And I'm just gonna do this one ever so slightly. So we want to start at 100, then maybe we'll go to 110, and just so it pops into place. Now this one I think is actually, might be cooler just leaving your background photo in linear. Let's see how it looks when I do the in there. So temporal interpolation, ease into that back node, and then you want to ease out of the first node or keyframe. I use keyframe and node uh, interchangeable. I'm sorry if that confuses people. So now I'm moving this one right here and let's see how that looks. <laughs> Boom. I kind of like that too. <laughs> Let's see if we can go a little bit more drastic on the scale in. Let's go to 150. Pop. That's okay. What we might need to do is actually scale up our glasses here just so they fit in. And then I'm going to take the position of them and make sure they hit his head the right way. In order to make this work, I move that over, but then I also want to keep it in the same space coming down. So if it happened right now, it would kind of come at a slant, but it needs to come straight down. So we'll see how it came at a kind of a straight slant there. What we need to do is make sure both of the vertical, um, I guess that's the Y plane, is the same on both ends. So see how it goes from 907 to 834? Well, we want to do 834 on both ends. So now it will come down straight. Pop. Deal with it. <laughs> Now we have our actions. He hits the thing, we come in close, pop, deal with it. Cool. What we need to do is highlight this, hit the question mark right, meow, and then that 
highlights it all. That's going to tell Premiere I want to export this little spot. So you Command M to export brings up this dialog box. Now with a, with a GIF, you do not need a very big size. So right here we have something like 1920 by 1080. You don't really need that big. That's way too big for a GIF. It's gonna be huge. Let's do it at something like YouTube port SD wide. Boom, that's a, that's a little bit better. So now we got this deal with it meme coming in and it's only gonna be six meg megabytes, eight and eight. Yeah, I'd say that's cool. So now what I'll do is I'll make sure that this is gonna save where I need it to. Where is my how to make a GIF? And I'm gonna make a new folder, call it GIF create. And here I will say new folder, MP4s, cool. Create, save, export. All right, it has just exported. So now what we need to do is go to our app store. Let's type in app store. And you want to look for a program called GIF Brewery. There it is. Cool. Git install app. All right, so here we have GIF Brewery 3 opened up. So what you can do is go here. My MP4 is where I saved my video. I'm going to drop it straight into GIF Brewery. Bam. And it opens straight up. Cool thing about this is you can resize it, you can crop, you can add text and do all those things. But I recommend, I recommend adding your text within Premiere because it's just a lot simpler to do that than here. Down here is our little, uh, our play bar so we can see what's going on. So right off the bat, if you were to hit create, it'll create it for you uh, with its own parameters. So let's see what we got. Boom. Deal with it. It's not bad. I mean, it's really fast. We want to make this thing pop. So we're going to go into the parameters here, go to settings, and this is where all the stuff really happens. So what I normally like to do is I see that the length of this clip is six seconds and 76 milliseconds. I think that's what that is. And what I want that frame count normally with a GIF that's, it makes it kind of smooth motion. If you take about 10 frames per second. So if this is 6.76, and I think that's closer to seven seconds, I want to put in something like 70 frames. Uh, so let's create that and see if that looks a lot smoother. Yeah, look at how much smoother that motion is. Pop, deal with it. That looks great, but the colors are kind of bad. Like we can we can really optimize this with GIF Brewery, which is awesome. What it does at the very beginning is it will take your colors and it will say, hey, I'm only going to change, I'm gonna compress this down so only 48 colors will be represented. But we want the whole full color spectrum. So I'm going to hit here and undo optimize GIF colors. And I'm going to hit recreate and see what we get. deal with it. Look at how much cooler that looks. But the problem is I can see right here, it tells you how big that file is going to be. And normally when you want a, to make a GIF online, you want to probably keep that under five megabytes. This is where making a GIF the right way for efficiency comes in handy. Taking the time to try and like tweak these little things to get the best colors and timing of everything will make it good. To begin with, I actually am going to go back to Premiere. So I want to actually sit here, hit play, and from this moment forward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and have this be a little bit faster. So I'm going to do this at maybe 150%, just because I want this GIF to be shorter in length so I can get a smaller file size. Let's see how that looks. So he hits it pop and there's not really that big of a difference in how it is so maybe I'll hit 200 and I'll have this one go to 125 at the beginning delete that space in between there and now instead of six seconds now I have a five second clip clip bop zhup, deal with it so what I also might do is I'm probably gonna go in here and I'm gonna shorten this a little bit too so I'll have this hit its mark a little bit faster because that will represent what happened with the rest of the footage. Remember, you just keep that thing in the same spot and you just keep moving that back node so they all match up here. Let's see how this looks now. Deal with it. Maybe a little bit too fast. I think the joke is lost a little bit, if you can consider this a joke. Pop. 
pop. Yep. Deal with it. Cool, I like that. Now I'm going to hit Command M, and now I'm going to, we already have a 1.2, so let's do 1.3, save. Already gonna have that YouTube at 420p SD wide parameter in there, export. And I'm going to bring in my V1.3 GIF Brewery. Go to our settings. If you wanted to have an easy way to just see if GIF Brewery can do it for you, everything like instead of tweaking stuff, click this calculate frame count and delay. So it calculates how many frames that are there and see how this changed to 57. I don't know if it'll change back, but yeah, 57 and it's delaying between each frame 83 milliseconds. So now there's 57 frames, which I might take that down to 50 because he, down here on the length is 4.73 seconds. I'm going to take off optimized colors and then let's see what, what kind of GIF we get and how big the file size is and if it had any file degradation, deterioration, boom. You get the same thing, but now we're at 9.1 megabytes. Let's see how much we can get that down. So now instead of uh, 57, I'm going to go down to maybe 48 frames and I'm going to take these optimized color GIFs and maybe go down to 145 and see if we still get a good quality GIF. Look at that, the colors look great and it's popping in. We're at 7.7, .7, but I still wanna get down to that five megabyte. I'm gonna go to the resize. Now, right now the width is at 854. Let's take that down to 600. That's kind of a standard on the internets. So maintain aspect ratio, hit resize. And because there's not as many pixels and it's not as big, resize is shorter, that will get our file size even smaller. Keep these same parameters, but after resizing it to 600, let's see what we get. Look at that. There's no, really, there's no file loss. The file looks great. And we still get the same kind of thing. And our file size is at 4.3. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna hit save. Save it to wherever you want to. For me, I will do it into how to make a GIF. I'll put it in my GIF folder right out in the open and I'll call it Sabin is a boss at acting. One, because there's probably more things that he's awesome at acting. I hit save and now you can go find your gif hit play and you can watch your gif and send it to all your friends for their delight isn't that sweet guys so if you found this really helpful and you just make a lot of gifts go ahead and actually send me some of the gifts that you make because that'd be cool and also, if you like this video, if you like any of my videos, if you found it informational, go ahead and give me a subscribe or a like. I'm coming out with daily content all the month of November. I hope this was short enough and sweet enough for you to get giferizing all of your material. I like that term giferizing, like taking a clip and giferizing it. Until next time, which will probably be tomorrow, I will see you guys on the next one. Have a great day. Whew.